this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I'm actually coming to you with a review. It has been even longer since I've done a review since I've done any other type of video, um, and I posted this probably since I actually posted my new rating system, where I talked about how I was going to do this new rating system based on Onyx Pages, Pages rating system, and then I never posted a review. Um, I still really love that rating system. It's just not conducive to how I think and how I kind of talk about books. I still think it's an awesome rating system. I'll probably still use it in actually kind of um, rating books, but I might talk them in less pointed versions of that rating system. If, if you're curious about that rating system, I will link it down below. I will also link Onyx Pages' rating system because like I said, it is awesome and her reviews are incredible. So now to actually get on the, with the review. I'm going to be reviewing A Study in Honor by Claire O'Dell. Now a quick synopsis of this book, if you've not heard about it, it was actually came out last year? Crap, I don't remember. Yeah, it came out last year. Um, and this is kind of a retelling of Sherlock Holmes and Watson that is set in the future and both Sherlock Holmes and Wat Watson are women of color. And I believe Watson, well, I know Watson is queer. And really that's all I needed to get into it. And I'm not going to read the back just because it gives kind of stuff away. But that is my quick synopsis of it. So I was really excited to pick this up. I actually made my book club read it for book club. And I did listen up to it on audiobook. And I was fine with the narrator. Um... I know some people are really picky. I listen to a lot of audiobooks, so I get, I've gotten less picky. Um, but I do know that some of the people in my book club were not a big fan of the narrator. So just go in knowing that I think she enunciates her words. Like, she's really kind of staccato. Um, so there's that. But that's kind of neither here nor there. Now, what I really, really liked about this book was the fact that the um, mystery in this well, there's a few mysteries, but the main mystery in this um, is kind of, it. it is the author's own, as far as I know. I'm not a Sherlock Holmes expert or anything. I actually even haven't read the original, so shame on me. <laughs> but this is set in the future. Um, it is going, we are, America is going through a second civil war. It's kind of hard to say how far in the future that it's never actually directly referenced, but it's at least like 20 years in the future, if not way further than that. Um, in the mystery that is presented in this book is entirely the author's own as far as I'm aware. It has to do with like pharmaceutical companies and drugs and like stuff like that. And I was really thankful for that just because since it is set in such a different setting, I was really happy to see that the author had kind of taken that as part of her own and made it more individual to her instead of just kind of revamping an old Sherlock Holmes mystery. And like I said, I could be completely wrong and this is, that's actually kind of something they deal with, like a place that, like a hospital or I don't know, like I said. So if that is the case, feel free to comment down below, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but from what I know, that is not a normal mystery for them and I was really happy to see that. I also was really happy that this Sherlock Holmes did not really fit the t stereotype of all the other Sherlock Holmes. So, of course, all the other Sherlock Holmes, at least that I've seen, of course, in the original is male. And then Robert Downey Jr., Benedict Cumberbatch, and then there was a ABC one called Elemental, Elementary. Um, they were all male. Um, and they were always, like, titled as being kind of cold, distant socially awkward or not a quite aware of the impact that their words say and I was really glad to kind of not see that because I really didn't want this Sherlock Holmes to be stereotyped as like the frigid bitch yeah. <laughs> and that can be that it could have easily been where she is just super intelligent but like cares nothing for no one is very unaware of what her actions say and that is not how the Sherlock Holmes is. The Sherlock Holmes is very aware of 
what she sometimes says, the impact it has on people, because there are, have been plenty of times, there are many times in this story where she'll say something, especially in the beginning, to Watson, and Watson, of course, takes offense or is really upset by it, and she will apologize for it, saying, I am sorry, I was trying to show off, I'm, I'm aware of what, what I said has impacted you, and I thought that was a really nice addition for Sherlock Holmes that she is, that this one is aware of that, um, just because I'm kind of really sick of seeing the frigid bitch stereotype. I had another thought and I forgot it. Now a few of the things I did not like about this book um, was the first half of the book, Watson is kind of really set up as her very own intelligent being and it almost seems like they're, Watson and Holmes are going to be more partners than Watson just being a sidekick and that is kind of lost in the second half of the book which I was really sad by because that is definitely a Sherlock Holmes and Watson I definitely prefer. Um, I don't know if you've read any of them. Sorry, well he's being really cute over there. Um, but Lori R. King did a series, it's called her Mary Russell series, where Mary Russell is kind of like a partner to Sherlock Holmes. Those are also really good, I'm only on the second book. But um, I was kind of hoping more of that, where Watson was actually a partner in intelligence wise and help with planning and information gathering or whatever and in the first half it's really set up like that might be the case because I mean Watson is a very intelligent being I mean they in all of them they're doctors so they do know a lot but they always seem to be very obtuse in the other books and the first half is kind of leaning more towards like Watson might be able to hold her own with this Sherlock Holmes in the second half that is completely disregarded she is kind of put back into the sidekick just there to kind of help Holmes to be a fulcrum on which Holcrums are fulcrum on which Sherlock Holmes plans move. And I was kind of sad to see that because I would really love a super intelligent Watson. I was so like I said, I didn't go into this knowing much. Um, but I was kind of saddened by the fact that instead of just taking that the author, I was kind of saddened by the fact that the author took, that instead of taking the original Sherlock Holmes as more of inspiration for her story, she kind of made direct references to it. And I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I feel like those direct references more so than anything constricted and hindered this novel. Really, all I would have needed was a really smart female consulting detective and a really smart medical doctor to work in partnership and she could have said this was inspired by Sherlock Holmes and kind of used that as a jumping off point. But, and she kind of starts to do that and you kind of get really into it and then she'll kind of like throw in this random odd reference to the original Sherlock Holmes or something like that. And I feel like it hurts the story more than anything. It does not make it any more impactful because this is an entirely story of its own. It's set in a world in which that Sherlock Holmes was not aware of in a way the original because that is set in the time it's written this is set in a future that could or could not come to pass for us based on kind of what's been going on in our world and so I was just always thrown for a bit when those references came in and kind of sad to see them come in just because I mean who needs more than a female awesome badass intelligent detective also working in tandem with a medical doctor who is also female, both women of color, like I don't need more than that and to bring, keep bringing those references back to the original Sherlock Holmes I don't think did it any harm, um, helped it at all. I did give this book um, a 4 out of 5, I did really enjoy it. I, for the most part I did really like the mysteries, there were a few too many, um, there's like three mysteries and uh, like they do all kind of come together but I feel like one of them was kind of extraneous but if you have read it please let me know what you think I would love to know because I haven't really heard of anyone else talking about this and if you just want to stop it and say hi please do I love to know that you guys are here and until the next video ta-ta for now